welcome to part 303 of our series on the influences on student achievement with the umbrella being the teacher. So I just went on a little diatribe about teacher credibility and you know what? You need that street cred, baby. Are you what you say you are? Do you have a long line of evidence that supports your claim? Just like Muhammad Ali of being the greatest. What am I saying? If at the and I know that we all hate testing. God, I don't know if anyone would jump to the front line. Ooh, ooh, me, me. I loved it. No, I think it all. Look, we all would wish it could be something that it, it currently isn't. But here's the here's the thing that you need to check and wreck. Are you what you say you are? Do your kids love being in your room? Is there like a locomotion about the community in which you live? Are kids hustling to get in your classroom at the beginning of the year over the summer? Are there legislative deals in the administrator's office about parents who really, really want their kids in your classroom? Are you where it's at in a bag of potato chips? Are you a walking, talking advertisement for public education? If you are all those things, please share with the world on your own podcast about how we can all be like you. Now look, we're all getting better. That's the thing. When we look in that mirror, that that should be the only competition we have, baby. When you're in the midst of a fraternity of education, we need to quit looking at our brothers and sisters, our sisters from another mister, our brothers from another mother, looking at each other like we're competitors, looking at each other like we're in some marathon that we are coexisting, but we are individual, individually trying to succeed. Nah, man, that's not how it works. Think about field day if you can. Don't you love field day? Well, must be. <laughs> I gotta be careful generalizing. I flipping love field day. Why? He gave me a chance to be a kid. What I'm saying, man, I pass around the eye black. We'd be like warriors. We'd be like, we would have so many scare tactics. We would try to intimidate our child just for the sake of defending the class, like the, the green shirt, the pink shirt, whatever. I'm serious. It's worth it. Now, I wanna be concise in this concluding part of the teacher influences on student achievement. And I wanna give you specific strategies that you can employ today to to be the epitome of Horton Hustle or fill in the blank hustle, whatever you are. There's there's something that you can do, I'm serious, that is 129% 129 of affect. It's an effect size of 1.29. Holy hootin', that's more than 100%, baby. That's 129% of growth of achievement that you could expect from a student that gets this strategy. What is it? Teacher estimates of achievement. Holy hoot nanny. I'm I'm not anything to write home about when it comes to psychic, being a psychic, being one of those Cleo, you know, no, I, I don't know about all that. I'm not Nostradamus, but I love, I love strategizing. Look, I played sports in high school and that's what I go, that's the will I go to. Uh, to conceptualize life around me. And you know, they say that everything can be brought back to baseball. Uh, and I'm just being honest with you, it can. And so the, the idea that I'm trying to, to draw is that, you know, I love when coaches, I love reading different periodicals or different points of reference, uh, frames of reference, where, you, where people are discussing the development of a player or expectations of a player. And, and if you live in the state of Georgia, Lord, love, people love talking about Georgia football, but everyone has their own opinion about it. Teacher estimates of achievement. If you can develop that rapport, that relationship, that expectation of the students in your classroom, of each individual student, and have legitimate, authentic, honest conversations with them about achievement, about goals, setting goals with them, Baby, isn't that the definition of an assessment? To sit beside? You look, we, it's so easy to just slap a grade on paper and say, okay, bye, no. What is that grade? And what can they do about it? I love thinking of education as a formative bowl of jello. Play-doh, if you will. Lord, everyone loves slime. My little seven-year-old, gosh, she loves slime. Making messes everywhere. She loves to fold it, bend it, slap it, pull it, tug it. But look, that, that, that's what we're doing in education. Because when I look at public education, I, I, I believe I've heard this maxim from somewhere, but it's like building a plane in the sky as you're flying on it. No one knows what they're doing, it seems like, except for these research-based uh, professionals, such as Dr. Robert, Marz- Robert Marzano and, uh, and John Hattie, and, and a multitude of other great think tanks 
that uh, do the work. They do the hustle and, and gather evidence. They conduct the studies, uh, the, the massive, massive undertakings that it takes to form conclusions and, uh, ev- ev- and to gather the evidence that inform teachers and district leaders and administrators and legislators about influences on student achievement. So having those conversations about teacher estimates of achievement, 129% in the, in the green. That's a good thing. Now, let me shift on to another great strategy you can employ in your classroom to be all that in a bag of potato chips. Teacher clarity. Do you synthesize what you're breaking down? I'll ne- I've never gotten so tickled at listening to very, very new teachers. I'm talking like, we're talking like green. We're talking like rookies. And they're talking way over the heads of their audience. That's the biggest, that's one of the biggest signs that, you know, there's room to grow. You got to know your audience, baby. What am I saying? Look, if you think about a comedian, you got to know your audience. If you're telling jokes and you don't want to be politicizing, you don't want to bash certain political candidates because you're ostracizing yourself. You need to know your candidate. Or I mean, I'm sorry, know your candidate. Yeah, sure. Go vote. But I'm telling you, you need to make sure that you know your audience. You know, know who you're speaking to and know what, what they need to hear to understand, to chew on what you're teaching, to, to show you what you can do to scaffold upon what they have already learned, their background information, their schema, and to build upon it so you can reach those levels of proficiency that are being laid upon you. Now, what else can we do in the classroom that can have us rocking? Now, think about this. Don't label students, you know? When you don't, when you take the, uh, the mature step in not labeling students and thinking of them as exclusively, identifiably gifted, God, every kid's gifted. I'm serious. We, I hate that term, gifted. Gifted, no, we're all gifted. We're all gifted in something. There's just different skill sets that we haven't unlocked yet. There's different gifted talents that we haven't unlocked yet. But it's your responsibility as an, as an instructor, as a teacher, as an agent of change. Hey, give them the tools that they can unlock that. You can't unlock it for them. But you, by God, you can equip them with strategies where they can. Because this whole world around us tells us that we can't. That's what differentiation is. We need to make learning accessible to all learners. Now, something you can do. Are you participating in a PLC? You're like, what'd you just call me? No, man. PLC, a professional learning community. I've got I've gotten quite tickled at our misguided understandings of what a professional learning community looks like. First and foremost, it needs to exist. You can't say that you have a you can't say that you have a professional learning community when you don't meet with any sort of conscious fidelity. Look, if you're meeting in perpetuity just for the sake of meeting, by God, it's not a professional learning community. If you're being told what you need to be learning, that's not a professional learning community. By God, I mean we tell kids what they need to learn, what they need to uh, achieve on to be successful. But we know we don't ever employ interest. What if we started learning what we're interested in? What if we started come? What if what if we're musically talented, musically intelligent, but we live in a world of um, let's say intrapersonal people? Let's, let's say people. You, you get what I'm saying? We're not creating a world that is like a blank canvas. We're already giving them like what they we're giving them assumptions of what they already are before they can already draw that conclusion. We don't need to do that. Now, here's one thing you need to think of with the professional learning uh, communities. 41%, uh, that is the affect, positive influence on student achievement that can be had when you're participating with great fidelity and great attitude in a professional development program, 41%. Now, let's shift on to another engaging um, amazing influence on student achievement. Student rating of quality of teaching. Here's one thing that I set myself up for this past year, my 10th year, my 10th and uh, concluding year as a teacher. One thing that I did is I purchased a subscription to Survey Monkey. Why? I wanted to appraise what my kids and my stakeholders and my parents, what they thought honestly about my instruction. And you know what? 
I open myself wide open for the sucker punch. You got to be really careful when you're asking people what they think (laughs) because you might just get it. And so what I'm saying is generally it was positive. Teachers um, don't do it enough where they put themselves on the line. And you know what? That vulnerability, that, uh, that fear of having someone other than your administrator evaluate you, that's terrifying. That is terrifying. Because you know what? The fact of the matter is, we like to think, oh, that don't matter. No, they're taxpayers. They're, that's your ultimate accountability right there. If they got a problem with how you're teaching, guess what? They pay for your job. So the thing is, when it comes, when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of it, you need to know how you're doing. And you know what? Perhaps maybe you're not all that in a bag of potato chips. So student rating of quality of teaching, let your students appraise you. Let the, Like, gosh, they would love that to give you a report card grade on something specific, such as how you're utilizing small groups, how you're, look at your uh, performance standards in your evaluation. Think about positive learning uh, community. Think about your environment, your classroom environment. Think about your instructional knowledge. And that's what I did. I took the criterion from our evaluation system in the state of Georgia, and I tried to put it in kid-friendly terms, and I, sure enough, turned that sucker into an assessment that my kids could take anonymously, mind you. That's what you need to do. You need to further uh, enhance that vulnerability and put yourself on the line and let them anonymously tell you how they feel. And, and, and it, it, will, it will completely uh, enlighten you as to how it really is because you don't want one person dictating uh, your proficiency. But, you know, when you have a theme, a pattern, uh, an average of a certain opinion perhaps maybe they're right. (laughs) And so that's something that you should consider. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take it to the hizzy. This is part three of three. Teacher influences on student achievement. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you on the next episode. Holla. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.